In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I design, build, and launch websites for my clients in just a few hours. This allowed me to streamline my actual client work down to just one day per week. I wanna give you a behind the scenes look at the process I go through when I'm designing and all the templates that I use to speed up this process. For the website build, we're gonna be using Framer. And since making the switch to this platform, it really has made my workflow 10 times quicker. And the reason why is this platform is the perfect hybrid between design and functionality. For a long time, the typical process for a web designer would be to mock up the design in Figma first and then build this website in another platform like Webflow. But what Framer does is combine this process into one platform. And so if you're a designer that's used to working in Figma, this is gonna feel very familiar to you. The layout is very similar and it functions on the same freeform canvas, which means you have complete design freedom. And so you can design and launch your website all within the same platform because Framer also has all the structure and functionality that you need from a website platform. So that when you're done, you just hit this publish button and have a fully responsive working website without a single line of code. But before we jump straight into Framer, the most important part of a smooth design process is the prep work that you put in beforehand. And so this video is actually step three of my web design process from start to finish. In the previous two videos, I showed you how I put together a website strategy and then how I actually write the content for this website. So by the time I sit down to open Framer, here's the checklist of everything that has already been approved by my client. We have the site map, the creative direction, all the website content approved and images optimized and ready to go. The other thing that I always have ready to go are these website templates within Framer. As a web designer, the last thing you wanna do is start from a complete blank slate for every single project. There are certain things that are gonna be the same for every single website build. And so as much as possible, you wanna set these things up once and then reuse this for every client. And you can do this in whichever platform that you're using, but here's how I have mine set up in Framer. In here, we have all the most common website pages already set up. And then within these, the essential content sections are already laid out for us. There's a general layout and flow that will be the same regardless of what type of client that you're working with. But if you work a lot with a very specific type of client, or if you have a very distinctive design style, then you can even customize your templates further to give you a really good starting point. And so if you're working in Framer, then you can grab this exact template that I'm using below and you'll be able to customize it and start using it with your own clients right away. So when I'm starting a new web design, I will duplicate this template. And then the first step would be to lay out all of the pages and content sections. So this client is a fitness creator who want to start monetizing their audience with digital products. And so they've come to me to build a website for them to sell their workout guide and one-on-one -on -one coaching services. And so the deliverables for this project include a homepage, a long form sales page, and a social media links page. And so I'm just gonna delete all the rest of these pages and lay out the content according to this sitemap that has already been approved by the client. The next step after this is to start to gather design inspiration. So I've already done some visual research to put together this mood board so that my client could approve the general design direction, but I'm gonna grab a few more visual references. And what this is gonna help me do is study different layouts and see what works well on other websites. So what I'm looking for are familiar design features that other websites use, because when you design something that feels very familiar to your audience, it aligns you with the other websites in your industry and it helps to build trust with that audience. But at the same time, I'm also looking for opportunities for my client to stand out in the industry and be visually distinctive and different from these other websites. And so for this is also going to help for me to draw inspiration from other industries too, so that I'm not just limiting myself to the fitness industry. And so my go-to sites for inspiration are Site Inspire, Behance and Awards. And while I'm browsing these, there are three Chrome plugins that I find really helpful to use for this. The first is Font Ninja. And this actually lets you see what fonts different websites are using and even test them out within your browser. And so if you find one that you like, you can click through and purchase it or browse similar fonts. Next up, we have the eyedropper tool. And this lets you easily take the color codes directly from different websites. And lastly, go full page for taking screenshots of an entire web page. And the great thing about Framer is because you have this freeform canvas, you can literally have all these screenshots laid out like this next to the page that you're designing. Now that I have all my inspiration here, the first thing that I'm going to do is set the site styles for this website. And so I'm adding my color palette and my font styles in here. When you're choosing your color palette, you want to test different color combinations to make sure that there's a high contrast between the background and the text. But at the same time, if the contrast is too harsh, it can also make it harder to read as well. Like for example, bright white text on a black background. And so for this reason, I always like to use an off white or an off black in my design 
designs to create a slightly softer contrast and it also gives a more high-end feel to your designs as well. And so once I've set these site styles, the first thing that I'm gonna start designing are the global components like the button styles. And one of the things that has really improved my eye for design and made me a much better web designer is really studying the smaller elements of other web designs, especially if you're newer to design, recreating elements from designs that you admire can really improve your eye for sizing and spacing, which does a lot to elevate your designs. And also taking a lot of these smaller details from a wide range of places helps you create something more unique. For example, I really like this highlight effect on this web page here. So I wanna use it to highlight my call to action button, which I think works well. And it definitely fits with the design style from our creative direction. Onto the logo. And so as a web designer, clients don't always come to you with things like logo designs and feel free to come at me in the comments for this one, but not every client needs a logo either, especially for this client as a creator whose main point of recognizability is their face within their content. They don't necessarily need a fully fleshed out logo suite that I would recommend for say a product-based business. So it can be useful to learn how how to put together a simple word mark that can be placed throughout the website and just enhance the identity of this site. And so for this, I'm taking inspiration from a couple of other logos within the fitness industry. This is the font that I've chosen. Other fitness brands use a lot of large, bold, sans serif fonts. And I like this one because it has these little details here that give it a bit of an edge. I'm taking inspiration from this pliability logo and offsetting the text to give this a sense of movement to the word mark, which I'll probably try and implement throughout the web design as well. So now that we've customized the button style and the logo, these elements are linked up throughout the design so the navigation bar is starting to take shape. I like to keep the navigation as minimal as possible. I want this call to action to be the main focus here and then these links should just help to answer any questions that the customer has before they're ready to hit buy. You really don't want people to be distracted and go down a rabbit hole especially with a sales page like this. In fact for a sales page I will quite often remove all of these links altogether because I want to keep people on this page. The rest of the page links is actually what the footer is is for. In the footer you're going to find the links to all of the pages including all the legal policies that you need on a website. A web design trend that I've noticed that I really like is this large brand name in the footer. I think it makes a real statement. It signifies to people that you've reached the end of the page and it's like a stamp of authority. I don't know I like it but let me know in the comments what you think. So now that we've customized these global assets, they're all linked so you can see that they've been applied to the other pages here. And what I'm gonna do now is start copying in my website content and designing these individual sections. Starting with the sales page because this is the page where you'll find a lot of these sections on the same page. And because all of these content sections are linked up as components, this means that when I change one of these sections, the design will actually be applied throughout the other pages here too. And this is really useful in speeding up your design process Process. And then on these pages where I'm going to have different content within these different section types, I can then detach them later on and change the content. And so I never start designing before I already have all of this website content written out and ready to go. I went through the process of writing this using these templates in my previous video. This copy here is what creates a high converting landing page. You're just using the design here to help you get this messaging across. So you have to start with the content first and then think about how you use things like text text hierarchy and color to guide your customer to take in this information in the right order. And then as I'm going through each of these sections, I'm also making sure to adjust the design for different screen sizes. So a really underrated way to build authority and social proof on your website is using a logo grid like this here with either brands that you've worked with or in this case, brands that have sponsored you. But something that really annoys me is that a lot of the time this can look really ugly on websites. You have logos of all different sizes and colors. So don't be afraid to format these logos to make them more consistent. And if you can, make sure to use the all white or the all black logo versions. And you can usually find these just by Googling the brand name and adding logo PNG, even if it's a smaller brand. Another problem that you often run into as a web designer is what do you do when the client doesn't have good images? And the answer to this is to get really good at sourcing stock photos. One of my favorite sites for this is Death to Stock, which is where all of these images are from. I'll often put together a small library of stock photos for the client to use because the right images can really make or break a web design. And so the next section on this page is often where I'll put a how it works section to give the customer a step-by-step -step plan of how to achieve their goal 
goals. But for this client, I'm gonna combine this section with their offer suite because we've chosen to structure their different offers in a way that guides customers through the different steps in their fitness journey. And so starting with a free nutrition guide, this is their lead magnet for their customer to try out their program and kind of build trust with their audience. Then step two would be for them to purchase their self-guided workout program. This is their digital product and what we call an impulse purchase. So it's under $50 and it's easy for customers to say a quick yes to. And then step three is their one-on-one -on -one coaching and this is their high ticket offer at the minute. So presenting these three options like this is actually very strategic. So the main goal of this sales page is to get people to buy this workout program here. And when presented with a choice like this, people will almost always gravitate towards the middle option. So by choosing to place this in between the freebie and the high ticket offer, we're increasing the chances that someone will actually buy this in comparison to if we just presented it as the only option. It actually doesn't even matter if no one chooses to go for this premium option. Just by having it there, it increases the perceived value of this middle tier option here. And the other things that I'm doing to visually increase the perceived value of each of these packages is increasing the description length as they go up in price. We've removed the box and the description of the first one and then we're using four bullets here instead of three. And then we're using color to highlight this option as the premium choice. And we're also introducing scarcity. So letting people know there's only three spots left so they should take action quickly. You wanna be careful with using scarcity. It's a tactic that's very overused and it can often be a bit icky, especially when you have those big fake countdown timers trying to trick you into buying something faster. But if you're using it sparingly and you're just being honest about how many spots you have left, then it can be really effective to increase those conversions. So next up, I wanna expand a bit more on what's actually included in these packages. For this, I really like this bento box layout. This is a very popular web design trend right now. And I already have a very similar layout built out. So I'm just gonna copy it in and customize it to display the different features of this workout program. For this, you really wanna focus on what these features help your customer do, not just displaying a long list of things included. And so I'm putting the outcomes here as the headings. And then in the description, I can describe what feature of this program is gonna help them get this result. So at this point, this page is really starting to come together now. We have a very strong design style that I think is working great. So I'm gonna go through and apply this to the rest of the sections on this page. Again, having all this content ready to just copy and paste into the design really makes this process so much easier. There was a time where I would be trying to piece together and write all of this content while trying to design each section at the same time. And it would just take me days to get through a page like this. But it's so much easier just to be able to focus on one thing at a time and enjoy being creative while you're designing this page. And so that is the sales page for a first draft. I think it's looking pretty good. Something I always recommend doing is taking a step back and coming back to this an hour or two or even a day later. You could sit here for another two hours and continue tweaking this, but getting that space and coming back with fresh eyes really makes a huge difference. And the best thing about these templates is because all of these content sections are set up as components, this means that while I've been customizing this sales page, these design changes have also been applied to the other pages. And so coming onto this home page, it's already matching my sales page. And so what I'm gonna do now is just detach these sections from their main component. And then I can change the content here and just finish off this home page really quickly. And so there we have it. We are done designing this website and it's pretty good timing considering that all we have to do now is hit publish. And this is a fully functional website ready to go. And of course, we are missing out a few steps here like how to actually hand this over to the client and get this website ready to launch. And so for this, make sure to check out this video here where I walk through my entire web design client process, including all the checklists that I use from start to finish.